We're now out on the Gold Coast. Tim, this is your home ground. You know where the fish are in this environment. You've won plenty of tournaments here. Tell us a bit about the unit that you've got in front of you. Well, this unit we've got in front of me now, Sean, is the new Humberbird 797. It's absolutely mind-blowing. I fished here in tournaments for the last seven years. I've won a few fishing in this exact spot. I thought I knew this bottom like back of my hand. I knew where the reefy bottoms were, but I found so much more terrain and, and rocky bottoms and gravel patches here using this unit in the last 12 months than ever before. The beauty about this unit here is with a normal single beam sounder shooting straight down in nine foot of water like we are here, I'd only be covering about three foot of bottom. With the side imaging, I'm gonna be able to cover up to 150 foot of bottom in this nine foot of water. So it's, it's amazing what it can do. And I can also pause that screen, I can mark a bit of reef that I find that might be out 50, 60 foot to the right of the boat, no worries at all. Then go over it with my traditional 2D sounder, see their fish sitting on there, fish down to those. So a lot of guys are actually fishing banks and snags that are exposed from the surface. And I guess also to a degree, using their traditional sonar to try and find fish in deeper water. Tournaments have changed a lot in the last few years and, and guys are concentrating out in open water a lot more these days, aren't they? And, and just trying to find areas that haven't been fished as hard. So a side imaging unit like this covering so much ground would be a big advantage. Oh, definitely, Sean. And everyone out there is getting better. And every advantage you can have to, to fish better, it, it'll give you a, a step ahead of them. And I can't see myself going into a tournament, even socially fishing now, without one of these units on board. They're just, like, like I said, amazing what you can do. Like with your normal 2D sounder here, you can actually see that's a bit of a rocky bottom there. But on our side image, we can see that was actually part of a vein of rocks going all the way out to the right there. I can pause that screen. If I go into my side image only screen here, I can actually pause that screen. I can move that cursor over onto that rock bar there. I can mark that waypoint. And also, I can save that to an SD card, which I've got in the unit here. So if at a later date, I can go through there. I can analyze it a bit more. I can see, oh, yep, there are a few fish sitting on there and uh, come back and hit it the next day if I want to. So that SD card actually saves the coordinates, the date and time of exactly when you took that capture as well. Yeah, I, it blows my mind that you can mark something 60 foot away from the boat, a bit of structure on the bottom, and then go and get right over it. So we're marking up a couple of rock boulders on this sandy bottom. What we want to do is get back onto those boulders with our 2D sounder. Timmy, how are we going to do that? Well, Sean, those boulders at the moment are at the back right of the boat. And to get to them, all I've got to do is press the centre of this cursor button. I move this little cursor arrow here over to the top of those boulders. And it's showing me that those boulders are actually 83, 86 metres away now. I mark that waypoint there on the screen. I press the exit button. I'll press the exit back to our GPS screen. So you can see waypoint 17 back here. I'll turn the boat around now. We'll go back to our 2D screen here. I'll turn the boat around now and head back up towards that that screen there. So as long as the boulders are still on the screen anywhere, we can actually save the exact location of those boulders. Yeah, and not only the ones that are just below us, we can save the, the image of them to the left and right of the boat as well. So those ones there were probably about 30 foot to the right of the boat, back behind us, pause the screen, marked them, and now we're going to head back up there and see if we can get right over the top of them. So we haven't actually set up a go-to here, we're just going to point, basically point the arrow over the top of that spot. Because we're so close, we don't really have to set up a go-to in this instance, do we? No. And we've got waypoint 17 on the on here, so that's where the mark is. You can actually see the track of where we've travelled, and that waypoint, we haven't been there. As we come in closer, I'll actually zoom in closer so I can ensure that we get right over the top of that mark there. And as we come over the top of that mark there, Sean, look, you can see we've gone over one of the rocky bombies, and here's the other rocky bombie coming up now. So we can now go to full screen sonar and there's those bombies coming up there. We've got a bit of uh, bit of weed and, and, and that coming up off the bombies as well. So that's why these hummingbird side images are so special. We can mark stuff out to the side of the boat, we can get back on top of them and we haven't even been there before. So we're now in close to this structure here. We've got pylons, we've got moored boats, we've got floating pontoons. There's plenty of structure for fish to see. But underneath that, there's also a hell of a lot going on. So what we're going to do is just see if we can have a look on our side imaging unit and find some fish and uh, 
have a go at catching them. So, Timmy, take us through what we're going to do here setting up this unit. Well, now, Sean, we've come into a bit shallower water, but we're only really concentrating out the right-hand side. So what I can do with my unit here is all I do is press the menu button once. I can choose to just show the right-hand side. So it's going to zoom right up on that right-hand side there. Also, we're in a little bit shallower water, so what I might do is bring the range of that side image in. I might bring it down to, to 55 foot, so we can really just concentrate on what's in under these jetties and pontoons. And as you can see here, we've actually picking up those white dots there, actually some of the pylons. So there. what we basically just need to do in simple terms is have a look how far we, we are away from this retaining wall here and basically bring our zoom level into that into that distance. That's exactly right Sean and as you can see here the pontoon we just went past you can even pick up the bottom of that pontoon which is that white line there so we know that we're right in up there along that bank. So by looking at the, uh, the terrain here it looks fairly sandy bottom there's not a lot of texture variance to it other than some rocks coming into screen now. We've, we've got some rocks there, so that might be a good place to have a few casts. There might be some fish holding above those rocks. But at this time of day too, you'll probably get a few fish holding in under these boats and, and big pontoons up here. So we'll, we'll have a side scan under them and, and just see what it shows us. Like you can even pick up all these individual pylons of these jetties here as well. The hull of the boat there. There's actually a few white flecks in there which look like they could be fish. I reckon we better have a crack at those fish then, if, uh, if that's the case. We, it can't be all business, can it? I <laughs> can't, we've got to have a bit of fun with it too, Sean. <laughs> so we'll just go past this last pontoon here and see what's hiding under that. And then once we've done that, we'll throw the electric in and have a fish at them. So we've come in nice and close to this pontoon here. So it'll, it'll show us that here it is just here. If you've got the top of it, you've got the pile on at the back there showing it. And there are a few white flecks in under there, so I reckon we should throw the electric in now and, and have a crack. Let's do it. Well done. Just sure came of. from off that boat there, just put putting the plastic in, nice and close to the boat. So we went in really close to that boat with our electric, didn't we, Sean? Yeah, so it gives you the ability to get close so you can make those accurate casts but not spook the fish. That's a lovely, lovely gold coast brim for this time of year. So look at that fella, just on a little soft plastic. Well done, mate. Beautiful. It's good to come to uh, one of Timmy's most famous <laughs> spots. <laughs> And, uh, and actually catch one of his brim. <laughs> this is Frank. <laughs> I've got them all on a first name basis. And I'll see you in a few months time when the next comp is, mate. <laughs> Good start, Timmy. Yes, uh, the second pontoon we got to. Get in the there. there he is. Alrighty, so the second pontoon we came to, just threw that little soft plastic lure right in under there. Minkota pulling us along this bank nice and quietly, allowed us to throw that lure in there. Probably just a legal brim, 